get started. Um, it's a huge pleasure and honor for me to introduce one of my favorite scientists to the QBI webinar series. Uh, I first met Vivek at a garden conference back in 2013 when I was a postdoc. And he hadn't met me before, but he was kind enough to reach out to me and he gave me sound career advice, where I should apply, how I should pitch my science, etc. And ever since that day, he has kept in touch and almost from the background served as a mentor and a friend. So I thank him deeply for all his help throughout these years. Um, Vivek is an exceptional cell biologist. He started his career at Oxford and then moved to Stanford to do his postdoc with Jim Rothman. And for those of you who heard Jim Rothman's Nobel lecture, you might remember Vivek's name coming up so many times during that talk. It was Vivek's work published in Cell in 1988 that first reported that NSF is needed for membrane fusion. So soon after, Vivek started his own lab at UCSD and rapidly rose through the ranks to become a full professor. He then uh, moved to Barcelona in 2008 and now serves as a chair of the Cell and Developmental Biology program at CRG in Barcelona. Throughout his career, Vivek has made several seminal discoveries that are both wide as well as deep. He has worked on Golgi structure and function, how it fragments during mitosis. He's discovered important components of the unconventional protein secretion pathway. He's worked on mucin and many, many more other such amazing discoveries. So recently, his work includes discovery of Tango 1, a protein required for secretion of large cargo such as collagen. It was a big mystery in the field that how a 300 nanometer wide cargo could fit into a 25 nanometer COP2 vesicle to exit the ER. And Vivek's discoveries have shed light into this long standing puzzle. So for his work, he has been awarded several honors and prizes that include Merck Award, uh, elected fellow of AACB, EMBO, AAS, as well as NGBT Excellence in Science Award, the Humboldt Research Award, and many others that I do not have time to mention. The bottom line is that Vivek is a leader in cell biology and highly respected both by his colleagues as well as his mentees. So I'm so delighted to host you today, Vivek. Welcome. Thank you. God, it's humbling. You've, you've, um, um, you've said um, too many good things about me. And I hope, if you, I hope you can hear me, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, this is truly an honor. And I remember I was at UCSF last year and I presented our work on how cells control the quantity and quality of mucins that are secreted. So I take this opportunity to present an area of biology that um, um, the area of biology that is, um, has been <clears throat> the focus of, not the focus, one of the focuses of my lab for the last 10 years. And it, before I get to it, I just want to introduce why this is an important issue. <clears throat> so I show you here, I hope you can see the first slide, um, um, a, a picture presented by George Pallotti in his Nobel lecture in 1974. I mean, George is the father of, uh, <clears throat> um, the process of protein secretion and cell compartmentation. And in his lecture, George <clears throat> highlighted how newly synthesized proteins that begin their life in the ER are transported first to the Golgi. And from there, they're captured into these mega structures, which he called condensing vacuoles. And these structures then fuse to the cell surface. And whatever was collected in this condensing vacuole that was in the Golgi before, and then it had started its, or, or, and previously was in the ER, this content is then released to the outside of the cell. And he had posited that vesicles are the containers of cargo, newly synthesized cargo from the ER <clears throat> across this secretory pathway. And this made perfect sense that small vesicles and big vesicles will pick up the cargo from the place um, they need to be exported from, and then they would take it to the next compartment and they will keep doing this till the cargo has been delivered to its right destination, whether it be the plasma membrane for transmembrane proteins, <clears throat> the extracellular space for secretory proteins, or for proteins that have to be delivered to the endosomes and the lysosomes. And um, so this was the foundation of the secretory pathway. And it is, for, for most part, true. This is how the system works. And over the last 30 years or so, um, oops, I have to go back. Over the last 30 years or so, we've learned a lot about 
how proteins um, or the cargoes are collected from the departing station and are delivered to the, um, to the final destination. And in the case of protein secretion, the secretory pathway, in 1989, COP1 vesicles were isolated. In fact, I was uh, the one who purified these vesicles in Jim Rothman's lab. And these vesicles, we were very sure at that time, are required for trafficking of cargo from one cistern of the Golgi to the next one in the forward direction. But I think over the years, we are beginning to think more uh, the, the, the thinking is changing that these vesicles are likely trafficking cargoes from Golgi back to the ER. And at the level of the ER in 1992 in Sheckman's lab, Randy Sheckman's lab, COP2 vesicles were purified and characterized. And these are the vesicles that transport material from the ER out of the ER in the direction of the Golgi. Okay? And although at the level of electron microscopy, they appear to be similar, in, in morphology, the contents are very different. The coats, this fuzzy material that you see here, are made up of different polypeptides. And, <clears throat> and the contents, what they carry inside or in the membrane, of course, is different. Now, one of the unique features of these vesicles is that they tend to be small in size. Uh, the average diameter in these cases is about 60 nanometer. Now, <clears throat> this is all very well for most of the cargo that is secreted in eukaryotes. Um, but there's a problem here. Um, eukaryotes, except yeast, uh, of course, um, synthesize and produce proteins and lipoprotein particles like chylomicrons that are huge. So for example, uh, you and I are made up of collagens and we have 28 different kinds of collagens and I'm just showing you two here, collagen one and seven. <clears throat> these collagens are, they are composed of a region which can be as long as 450 nanometers in the case of collagen type 7 and 300 nanometers in the type, in, in, in type, type 1. Now, the size alone would tell you that there is no way something this big could fit into a vesicle that is only 60 nanometer in diameter. So how would a cell export collagen? And this is not a small problem because 25% of our dry protein weight is collagens. So these are the most abundant proteins. Uh, and they're, of course, very, very important because without collagens, you have no skin, you have no tissue, no bones. Um, and and, and, and if, if, so there is a problem that needs to be solved. And these chylomicrons are lipid droplets, which have proteins on the surface. These are assembled in the lumen of the ER and they are secreted and their function is to scavenge cholesterol and, uh, and glycerides, triglycerides in circulation and then remove them. And so therefore you have to release these particles. <clears throat> and the problem is again, they are too big to fit into a small 60 nanometer COP2 vesicles, vesicle. <clears throat> and then add to this, proteins called mucins, which are again huge molecules. And we secrete a liter of mucin per day. And there are 21 mucin genes, and we know that they are very, very important because they are secreted by goblet cells and their function is to, 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 to provide the first layer of defense. And in fact, viruses like coronavirus, one of the things they do is to shut down the secretion of mucins. This is something that we are trying to address. And, and they use this as a way to perhaps improve their rate of propagation. We don't know that for a fact, but this is a hypothesis. So we need to understand how these kinds of molecules are secreted by cells. And this led us to a, a perform a genome-wide screen um, in, in 2004, and we completed it in 2006. And this was a, one of the first screens for the entire genome, and we did this in Drosophila cells to look for metazone specific proteins that would be required for secretion and would not have been identified in uh, Randy's famous uh, screen for secretory mutants that was in Saccharomyces cerevisiae. <clears throat> and so we called these genes that were found to be required for transport and some of them were also required for the structural organization of the Golgi. So for the sake of simplicity, we 
we monitored um, these genes, Tangle, Transport and Golgi Organizations. There are about 70 of these. And frankly, we've only worked with two. And I'm going to talk about Tangle 1. So Tangle 1 is a large protein. It is in mammalian system, it's 1,900 amino acid long. It has a signal sequence, an SH3-like domain, a coil-coil domain, and a very strange transmembrane domain that becomes very important, and I'm going to describe this. This protein, this part of the molecule is in the lumen of the ER, and then in the cytoplasm, it has two coil-coil domains and a proline-rich domain. By the way, almost all of this, this, this part here, is unstructured, okay? So this protein um, was the first one that we decided to work on for the very obvious reason, and I'll tell you why. When this protein was expressed in a tagged form and an and antibody was used to localize it, we found that it localized to very specific domains of the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the ER in mammalian cells, and this is the location of Tango 1. And these domains or regions that harbor Tango 1 or host Tango 1 are in fact the ER exit sites. So these are the sites where the cargos are collected before they can be exported uh, from the cells, from the ER in direction of the Golgi. So it localizes the ER exit sites. And Kota Saito, who was responsible for this analysis, he's now a professor at Akita University in Japan. Uh, um, so he found that when Tango was depleted by siRNA, this is in the year 2009, <clears throat> there was a defect. He, in fact, he had shown that Tango 1 binds to collagen type 7 and many other collagens. Okay? So this gave us the impetus to think that perhaps Tango has a role in some aspect of collagen biology. So when then he went ahead to de deplete Tango from cells that secrete collagen type 7, he found that there was a reduction in the amount of collagen that was secreted by the cells. And what was not secreted was found to be accumulated inside the cells. And the accumulation was found to be in the endoplasmic reticulum. So this gave us the first clue that Tango was required for export of collagens. And at the same time, we found that the quantitation is shown on, 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 the, on my right here. And at the same time, we found that secretion of many other cargos that we had looked at was not affected. So this gave us the reason to propose that Tango perhaps has a specific role in export of collagen type 7 and other collagens, although we had focused only on collagen type 7. And this is exciting because we had, for the first time, a way to address the issue of collagen export. Now, while we were doing our experiments, our colleagues, our friends at Genentech, Andy Peterson and colleagues, made a mouse knockout of Tango 1. And they found that a, the loss of Tango 1 results in production of a pup. The pup has skin problems. It has no mineralized bones. And in fact, many of the bones are missing, as shown by these arrows. This is the control. And this is the, 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 the mouse. And this pup dies at birth. It really is like a rubber band. Okay? It has no mineralized bones. And they looked at, because they knew of our data, they went and searched for defects in collagen export. And they found that um, the MEFs um, failed to secrete uh, collagen type 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, and 11. And they looked at many others. Okay, so this was the evidence that we were looking for, that Tango 1 has a role in collagen secretion, as we had shown. Uh, based on tissue culture uh, type analysis. And this was the genetic information that gave us the confidence that Tango is the right molecule. Mind, mind, mind you, Tango is also called MIA3, which stands for melanoma inhibitory activity. And uh, this has to do with its link to ECM defects. And I'll, uh, if the time permits, I'll describe this later. But it's the same, same gene. Okay. So this gave us the confidence that Tango is necessary for collagen export. And the question then becomes how, the mechanism, which is, as you would agree with me, a sort of a rather difficult um, thing to address. And this is where mistakes are often made. So the very simple thinking we had at that time, this is in the year 2010 now, was that if COP2 coats are required for creation of a transport vesicle, the idea would be that COP2 coats assemble at the surface of the ER 
and they mold the membrane and then they pinch uh, 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 a portion of this membrane, which is then converted into a small vesicle. So if you want to create a 60 nanometer diameter vesicle, you will assemble a coat of perhaps this size. But if there is a need to export big cargoes like the collagens, all you need to do then is to assemble a larger coat. So uh, this, this would then allow you to pinch a larger surface of the ER, thereby creating a larger transport carrier. Well, this seems like a very logical way of thinking about how collagens would be exported, that all you need is tango to collect cargo and, 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 and coat to assemble into a larger structure. And the rest is simple. Um, and, and this would have solved the problem. But this turns out not true, not well, and not entirely true. And I'll go through the data now. So we had shown that the proline-rich domain of tango, so this is a diagram of how tango functions, okay? And you will see steps, step one. This is the very beginning of the process, how tango comes into the reaction which results in export of collagens from the ER. So Tango's proline-rich domain we showed in 2009 binds to SEC23, one of the proteins of the inner coat of the COP2 coat complex. And we had shown that the SH3-like domain is required for binding collagens. But Hans-Peter Backinger did a very uh, nice piece of work that was published in 2016, and he said that Tango doesn't bind collagens directly, it does so via this very famous adapter for collagens called HSP47. Okay, so that really strengthened our data. And <clears throat> while we had shown that proline rich domain somehow binds SEC23, Jonathan Goldberg crystallized this part with this, and he was able to show that sec proline rich domain of Tango 1 has seven repeats of prolines, and it is these proline repeats within the total domain which interact with SEC23. Okay. So now this is the starting uh, uh, of, of, the, of the process. Now we didn't really see any change in the total surface area of the COP2 coats in this reaction. And so we were wondering for a while, how would this triple helical structure then be exported out of the lumen of the ER through the function of Tango 1. Now, we had a very surprising result. A postdoc in my lab by the name of um, Patrick Ullman re repeated Kota's experiment and he did look at, he looked at other proteins that were found to be in the complex of Tango 1 and he observed that there was a protein which is required for fusion of membranes and this protein is called SLI1. And this made us think that perhaps you do not increase the size of a transport carrier by just simply taking more membranes from the ER. But what you do is you recruit membranes that fuse to the ER and this mechanism is used to uh, uh, export collagens from the ER. And I'll go through this data briefly with you, okay. So what he found was that SLI1 was the protein that's bound Tango1. This is a protein that is required for the function of the famous snare proteins that are required for membrane fusion. So when he depleted, Patrick and Ishii Raote in the lab depleted SLI1 from, <clears throat> from cells, there was a decrease, um, there was a tremendous, about 80% less secretion of collagen uh, from, the, from, the, from the cells. And what was not secreted was arrested in the ER. And this is just to show you a control that depletion of tango completely abrogates secretion of uh, uh, collagen and the collagen accumulates in, in the ER. So if SLI1 is required for collagen export from the ER, then we had to find the snares involved in this process. And that was simple. All you have to do is take all the snares known between the ER and Golgi. So there is a T snare and there is a V snare details but important experiments. So the bottom line is if you deplete syntax in 18, USC1 um, and BNP1, these are the T snares at the ER, you affect collagen secretion, okay? So fine, we had the T snares. And now the question is, what are the V snares? So for all the V snares between the ER and the Golgi, there was one which was specifically required for this pathway and it is called YKT6. 
loss of YKT6 results in inhibition of collagen export, and the collagen explode is, 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 is found accumulated in the, in the, in the ER um, in, in these cells. So this told us that the mechanism by which Tango 1 exports collagens from the ER is not simply by increasing the amount of membranes collected from the ER, but it is bringing some kind of membrane to the ER, which fuses to a specific domain of the ER, and, and this event is necessary. So I'm slowly building the story to tell you what these membranes are and how the system works, okay? So, <clears throat> fine. Now, this led to another very big surprise. We found, and this is the work of Ishii Raute in the lab, he found that Tango 1 at the ER exit site assembles into a ring, as shown in many different pictures here. And these rings corral or, or, or enclose um, an amount of COP2 coats. So um, this then becomes a functional center. So the idea would be that a ring of Tango 1 assembles at the ER exit site. Within the ring are COP2 coats. In the lumen of this ring, in the lumen of the ER, within this ring would be the domains of Tango that binds collagen and something is being added, some membrane is being added here, which allows collagens to move from the inside to the outside, okay? So this was in mammalian cells, and last year, Kelly Ten Hagen did an amazing, uh, presented an amazing study in PNAS, where she observed rings of tango in flies. And this is in fat bodies, which secrete lots of collagens, and in salivary glands, where there is a massive secretion of mucins. And these rings, as shown here, are much better than the kinds of rings that we had seen. Uh, I think the rings are much bigger in size and easier to visualize because of the quantities of material secreted by these two specialized cells. But it gave us the confirmation that we are really looking at um, something for real and not just uh, something that we might have imagined. Okay. So Tango assembled into rings. Fine. This then takes us to the next issue what membranes or which membranes in the cell are being recruited and how are they specifically recruited to tango wandering because it doesn't make any sense these membranes were being recruited diffused to the er and not to the site where collagens are to be exported because they will just become miscible with the er it could be a complete waste of reaction okay so in order to do this we knew that the membranes had to be recruited by tango one and it had to be the cytoplasmic part so this is where Antonio Santos and Ishir got together and they decided what they were going to do was to create different fragments of Tango 1 and express them on mitochondria. The idea being, if there are membranes that are being recruited to, to, by, by Tango 1, if we place the recruiting agent at the mitochondria, those membranes will simply go to mitochondria. And because they would not fuse, we should be able to see them. So this is just to show you that various constructs were expressed. And we also found a way of expressing Tango 1 at mitochondria. So remember, Tango 1 contains transmembrane domains that should ordinarily go to the ER exit site. But there was a, a way to create them in such a way that we could send them to mitochondria. It's an important detail, but not for this uh, talk. So many of these constructs go to mitochondria. This one does not. This one, in fact, ends up in the vacuole. Okay, and that we are trying to figure out why. Um, and, and, and so here is a domain of 50 amino acids from Tango 1. If this domain is missing from this particular construct, it still gets to the mitochondria, but it cannot recruit a set of membranes. And the way we analyzed these membranes was simply to use compartment specific antibodies. So we used antibodies to the Golgi, to the endosome, to mitochondria, to lysosomes to any compartment that you can think of. And we found that urchic membranes, which, which these are the membranes that are in between the ER and the Golgi, that's what it stands for, ER Golgi Intermediate Compartment. They are a collection of tubules and vesicles. Okay. So we found that urchic membranes were being recruited by this domain expressed at mitochondria, by this domain expressed at mitochondria, by this domain expressed at mitochondria, but not if a domain was missing 50 amino acids. And now we can now show more clearly that if we just express these 50 amino acids with this transmembrane portion to the mitochondria, it recruits urgent membranes. So this was very nice because it told us 
that this part of the molecule here, which is proximal to uh, the membrane on the cytoplasmic side, we call it tear, which stands for tether for um, uh, tether for um, urchic at ER. Okay? We are very good at coming up with these names because these names are easy to remember. So this is tear at the mitochondria, and this is urgic membranes that are being recruited, and this is just a merge of this plus this. Okay? So now we know that urgic membranes are being recruited by the tear domain of uh, tangle one on the cytoplasm. And the question then becomes, is it direct or is there something else involved in between? And this experiment was performed by Ishii Raote again, and all he has done here is sort of technically challenging, but the results are quite clean. So you immunoprecipitate tango from cells and you ask what co-precipitates. So tango one precipitated four proteins, NBAS, RINT1, ZW10, and a protein called CTH5. This is a partner of Tango1 in collagen secretion pathway, okay? Now, these proteins are a complex which assemble into a big complex which is called the tether complex. And these proteins function to recruit membranes to wherever this complex localizes, okay? So we found that if we created a Tango that was missing the tier domain, the 50 amino acid, it was still capable of binding CTH5, but it failed to recruit the tether complex. And if we created a tango which was proximal to the tier domain, that was still able to recruit the, 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 the tethers. Okay? And the luminal part of tango has no reason to recruit these proteins because these are in the cytoplasm and this is in the lumen. They should not see each other. So this is a good control. So this told us then that Tango 1 at the ER exit site has a domain of 50 amino acid, which binds to a set of proteins called the tethers, which then recruit ergic membranes. We don't have the binding partner of these membranes, these proteins, the, tier, uh, the tether complex at the ergic, and we are trying to identify that. Okay. So this is just to show you that we can visualize these uh, elements. So here is a, a, an, a, an experiment or data that shows the organization of tango in green and the, one of the tether proteins in red. Okay. And you can see clearly that a ring of tango is found to be a, a, a closely opposed to uh, the tethers. Sometimes, most of the time, we see just one spot of these tethers, but sometimes we see two. And if anyone is interested, this would be a very interesting topic to discuss later on, and, 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 and I would gladly discuss this later uh, if the time permits, okay. But the fact is that we can see the tango and, and the tethers. In fact, we can also, by using super uh, resolution microscopy, see all three. So here is a ring of tango, and in the red, I'm showing you here are the tether complex, and the blue is a protein that is contained in the urchic membrane. So we see all of this in one site where uh, the collagens are are, are collected in the lumen and are to be exported. Okay. So how does it work? So I've told you that Tango assembles at the ER exit site in a ring and the ring corrals COP2 coats and within the ring would be then the membranes and in the lumen of the membranes would be the collagens. We haven't been able to see this plus this plus this plus this but this is something in, in progress. Okay, And this structure is recruiting ergic membranes which fuse here and this is responsible for the growth of this of this domain so it is not simply taking more membranes from this area by increasing the size of the coats but 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 by creating a system whereby you collect cargo you collect all the components which then recruit membranes that fuse and this fusion results in the growth of this element, which is required to export these bulky molecules. Now, you see this structure and you say, Vivek, come on, this cannot be. If the membranes are fusing, why don't they become miscible with the bulk of the ER? Meaning, how do they fuse and just grow in this direction? Why don't these membranes simply become part of the ER? And because ER is such a huge surface area, how do you restrict this? miscibility of this membrane 
to the bulk? Very important question, and we've been trying to address this many for many years. And in collaboration with Fred Ponce in, in France and Jim Rothman at Yale, we've been able to address this issue. And this was published uh, about a month ago in eLife. So what we've done here is we've taken the transmembrane helices of Tango 1 that were purified. So the transmembrane organization of Tango 1 is very peculiar. It has one full transmembrane domain and another one that dips into the inner leaflet of the ER, as shown diagrammatically here. So we could purify this. This is this plus this, and it's shown here. Or in parallel, we purify just the transmembrane domain shown here. So this is about 32 kilodalton, and this is together about 35 kilodalton. Not, uh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is 35, and this is 32. So what we've done is we've reconstituted this or that in liposomes, as shown here, uh, which have fluorescinated lipids. And now these liposomes, from these liposomes, we pull a tube, as shown here. I hope you can see this. Okay, I have no way of knowing whether you can see this or not, but I will continue um, thinking that you can see this. Okay, now what we do is we, put, we bleach an area here. Um, when we bleach an area here, we ask, is there recovery? If there is recovery, that means um, the lipids are freely uh, 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 flowing and, and that's not good. But if there is no recovery, that means that there is a ring of tango here from these domains which prevents flux of lipid as, uh, uh, from here to this side or from here to this side, okay? And what is the result? So this is, this is the possibilities, right? These are the three possibilities. There's no protein, so if you bleach here, there should be mixing of lipids. And if you just express the transmembrane domain, which we know does not form a ring, it's, it's data that is uh, not published yet, but um, this alone does not form a ring, um, and there should be mixing of lipids. But if you have both the transmembrane and the inner membrane domain, then we know that they form a ring. And if you were to bleach here, there should be a reduction, if not a complete absence of uh, lipid mixing. And the result is shown here. This corresponds to this, this corresponds to this, and this corresponds to this. Meaning, when we express or when we reconstitute these liposomes, with transmembrane and inner membrane domain of Tango 1, for transmembrane helices, then, this, there, then there is a tremendous reduction in the amount of, uh, in the flow of lipid from here to here and from here to here, okay? So this tells us, of course, there's a lot more to be done here, but this is a, a, a reasonable uh, uh, way to support our thinking that the transmembrane helices of Tango, when they assemble into a ring, they prevent lipid mixing meaning that this area can now grow and not simply become a part of the rest of the ER okay. And so you notice that what I haven't said here out loud is that the fusion of ergic membranes to this domain of ER, which was corralled by Tangle 1, was like a tunnel. It's a, it's a tunnel whereby the collagens are moving from this side of the lumen of the ER into the lumen of this structure, which is a composite of ergic membranes and perhaps, and not perhaps, definitely a part of the ER membrane that was enclosed within this ring by Tango 1. And once this material has been transferred, the next step, of course, is that you cut here. Okay? You cut here, and now what you've done is you've created a structure which is, in fact, the ergic, okay? which is a, a, a compartment which will then become cis Golgi, which will then become medial Golgi, which will then become trans Golgi, meaning there was no mega vesicle created per se. The vesicle in this case is in fact the compartment, the next compartment in the secretory pathway. So we propose that ordinarily, in definitely in Saccharomyces cerevisia and in many, many, many conditions, COP2 vesicles are created for trafficking of cargo from ER in the direction of the ergic and then to the Golgi and so, forth, so on and so forth. But trafficking of bulky molecules like collagens, and we, 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 we know mucins, and we haven't published, but chylomicrons as well, 
is mediated by a direct link of a domain of ER exit site to the next compartment, okay, which is the RJ. And the migration of material from here to here is being mediated by this tunnel that is created. And this is a transient tunnel. When the cargo has been transported, you cut. And this material, this membrane, which is ergic here, will become cis-Golgi by maturation, which will become medial Golgi by maturation, which will become trans-Golgi by maturation, and it will just keep going without the need to create specific transport vessels. Now, this does change the, the map provided by George Pallotti in 1974 and, and our general thinking that transport is mediated by vesicles. And we are saying that at least for the most bulky and the most abundant cargoes, there is a reason to believe that the vesicle in this case is in fact the next compartment, which is transiently recruited, fused uh, to capture cargo and then go forward in this particular direction. Okay. So, so much for the, uh, for the mechanism, uh, and we are trying to uh, dig deeper into it, and, and I'm sure there'll be questions afterwards which will, uh, which will sort of take us in the direction of what exactly do we know about these tunnels, et cetera, and I'll leave it for the discussion. Now, I told you that if you don't have Tango 1 in a mouse, the mouse delivers a pup, but the pup is dead at birth. And we've, uh, we've identified in collaboration with Thomas Hoff um, in Germany, human patients who have mutations in Tango and, and they show severe forms of collagenopathies. Okay? So uh, there are many examples and I'm just going to give one, example number one. So pedigree of the investigated family, this family, um, the parents are heterozygous carriers for Tango 1 and they look kind of okay. They produce five offsprings, one of them died and the four of them show severe collagenopathies. They are dwarfs, they're very, very short. Every tissue in their body is much smaller in size compared to normal people, and they show mild retardation. Okay, these are all the, 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 uh, the effects of, known effects of reduction in collagen um, uh, secretion uh, levels. Now we were able to show that what happens because of this mutation in, in these patients is that there is an axon um, uh, slipping, which results in creation of a shorter version of the protein. So instead of having uh, a, a, a full length protein, all you have is the luminal part. So this protein can bind collagen, but it doesn't have a way to engage to the cytoplasmic machinery. And this results in basically lowering in the amount of collagen secreted into the medium. It is about a 75% reduction. And this is looking at collagen type one. Whereas there is no defect in secretion of another cargo, which is secreted by the same cells, antitrypsin. Okay, and this is just to show you that these cells express two forms of tango, full length, the top form, and this mutant form, which is this here. Okay. And, 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 and so the calinexin cal levels are fine in these cells. Okay. So this tells us that there is, and in fact, there's another patient that has been identified where the, the offspring are, are rejected at, 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 at the fetus stage because they are completely depleted of tango. And this is the work of uh, um, a group in uh, Belgium and it's currently in review. So I think what we have here is we, we, we identify the molecule required for tango, uh, for collagen export. We have a, a good understanding of how tango works. And we think uh, there is a revolutionary new way by which cells export these bulky molecules. And I've given you uh, data that if there is a defect in uh, a tango, there is a clear link to human pathology. Now, because collagens are a very important constituent of extracellular matrix, and we also know that collagen hypersecretion is one of the causes for tissue fibrosis. So we asked whether we could identify inhibitors, we could generate inhibitors of uh, Tango 1 and use them for um, addressing the issues of fibrosis. And we've done it. Um, so I'm going to show you examples here. So we have um, P1, P2, P4, P5, uh, P3 is not shown because it doesn't work all the time. But these are the five, four inhibitors that we have. Um, and what you're looking at here is the effect of these inhibitors in, in tissue culture system. Then I'm going to show you the mouse model. So we're looking at the levels of collagen treated uh, cells. We're looking at the levels of collagen inside the cell and in the medium, and this is a quantitation. So you would notice that 
P2, P1, P2, P4, and P5, they all show a, a defect in the amount of collagen secreted. But we focused on P1 because this turns out to be important. Although P4 is very, very strong in terms of its effects on collagen secretion, but what seems to be happening is that it is somehow causing collagen degradation and a small fragment of collagen is secreted. Um, so we don't really know how this would work. Um, but, and, and P5 is also very good, but it causes massive accumulation of collagen in the lumen of the ER. And we want to avoid accumulation of collagens in the lumen. So we want basically a system whereby there's no particular accumulation per se inside, meaning whatever was being, not being secreted is pulled out of the ER and degraded by proteasome and ER phagy pathway. So we focused on this uh, uh, inhibitor P1, and we asked, can we test this in a mouse scleroderma model. So there are many ways to do this thing. Uh, bleomycin is the one that is used commonly, but there are much better ways to test this. And we've used here a, a, a model which is based on overexpression of snail. So if you look at the wild type mouse, this is the thickness of the skin. If you have a scleroderma model, this is the thickness of the skin, okay? It's, it's about twice at least, okay? Now what we've done is we have treated these mice um, uh, 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 applied uh, the, the, the inhibitor P1 and we have asked what is, the, what is the effect on the thickness of the skin 21 days after application of, of this material. Okay? And you can see that clear and we are looking at a certain distance so we are looking at, I, I, sorry I can't remember the exact details, but it's at a distance from the point of application. Okay? So these Inhibitors are membrane permeant. Um, it says confidential here because this is my institute's policy. They are trying to get patent, etc. Okay, so this was the the scleroderma skin, and when we apply our inhibitor, there is, is a massive recovery from this pathology, meaning we can reverse the scleroderma phenotype by using inhibitors of collagen, and we know that this is because a 75% reduction in the amount of collagen being secreted. So we think, I mean, this is you know, not a therapy yet, but we think we have a way to uh, control uh, at least skin, uh, at least scleroderma, and we are trying to test this in internal tissues, such as lung and, and heart and kidney. And you all know that there is absolutely no way to control fibrosis and it's, it's the, 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 the phenotype, the fate of fibrotic tissue is usually fatal. Okay. So we are going in, in that direction and we are hopeful that this might turn out to be a useful tool. So I was told that I have only about 30 minutes and I've blabbed on for about 40. So it's time for me to conclude uh, with thanking people who've done all the work. So Fred Bard, who's now a senior scientist in IMCD in Singapore, is the one who carried out the genomic screen. Kota brought us, discovered Tango 1 from the screen. He was an assistant and an associate professor at Tokyo University, now a full professor in, in Akita University. Patrick is running a, a big company in, uh, in Austria. Uh, Christina was a postdoc who is now at Oxford. Antonio was a postdoc. He is now in, at Stanford. Um, uh, Felix was a postdoc who also worked on the Tango team and he's now an independent investigator at another institute in Barcelona. Maria was a technician who was a tremendous help in this process, and she's now in Sevilla. Uh, Ombri is an independent research fellow in my lab uh, and currently working on Tango, and Ishir is a postdoc, and every lab should have at least one of Ishir in their lifetime. He is absolutely spectacular, and he's revolutionized our thinking of um, how Tango works to export collagens from the ER and is in the job market. Um, um, and unfortunately, I'm missing here pictures of Ankit Tiwari and, 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 um, and um, uh, oh dear, and, and uh, Natalie Browers, who are also working on the Tango team. With that, I think I will stop and gladly answer any simple, easy questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
Thank you so much, Vivek. I will have a, a online applause. I'm sure others are doing the same. Um, so I, uh, I would like the audience to please type in your questions in the chat window. And maybe I'll start off with one or two that I had in my mind. So one is how does the collagen ex exit the TGN then finally? Sorry, just can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you? Yeah. Sorry, what was that? How does collagen? exit the TGN. So it goes uh, and so, progresses. Uh, yeah. So the idea would be that ergic membranes came out. They were like a large cisterna. And what you're doing is it just keeps moving forward. And you're removing material that should not go forward by copcon vesicles. Sure. So this is the basic tenet. This is the principle right. of cisternal maturation. So you don't need anything else. Once you leave the ER and you're filled with collagen in a compartment, that compartment simply is being depleted of material that should not go forward and it just keeps moving forward. We don't think there is any sorting post ER because there are no Tango 1 like molecules anywhere outside of the ER. Okay. Um, I, I had another thing about the visualizing where there were two tethers on two sides. Uh, I yeah. wonder what you felt about that. So, what we think what happens is the Tango's ring assembly begins when it binds collagen in the lumen. Okay. And we think what happens is that triggers it to start assembling. And the assembly happens very likely from a point and it goes in this direction. Okay, so it's, so one possibility is that there's a tether in the beginning and there's a tether at the end. So you do okay. this, it's very much like a policeman's handcuff. Okay, cool. So you do this and this might allow you to change the dimension. So you could do a small one ring, you could do a bigger ring. So we think this, um, but we don't really have um, we don't really have a sort of data to say that it happens like this. We think tango is a, we know that tango is a filament, but whether a filament starts at one point and just continues to grow around the rims of the COP2 coats, or whether it grows in this direction here and another direction here, we don't know. This is something, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. It's trying to address this issue. There's some questions in the Q&A. So if Anita, would you mind, um... Uh, unmuting yourself and asking the questions you had. Sorry, took yeah, a yeah. second to uh, unmute um, with the webinar function. Uh, Vivek, that was an amazing seminar. Um, I was wondering, I think you said Tango 1 is um, metazoan specific. Is there a, a related mechanism for exporting bulky cargo and yeast? There is no bulky cargo in yeast. There is none. Okay. Yeast, yeast hardly secrete anything. I mean, you know, they make the <laughs> cell wall. They make the cell wall, and there is nothing bulky in yeast. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We have engineered Tango's expression in yeast. And what we are trying to do in the lab is something uh, uh, you might call it bizarre, but we want to express collagen and export it out of the ER. So we are slowly building the whole. Okay. Well, collagen yeah. export machinery in yeast. So far, we've been able to get uh, Tango to be expressed in the ER, and it seems to be fine. It doesn't kill the yeast. Now we are slowly building other components because they contain COP2 coats. That's fine. Yeah. But they don't have the cargo. And so yeah. we are trying to build um, um, the whole machinery. So we're doing this to ask, can we make yeast change their uh, attitude to bulky cargos? And, 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 and make it. And if you can make yeast export fully folded collagens, that's another reason to not kill cows because, you know, when people talk about leather, it's basically cow hide, right? So we are going in that direction, but we are not nowhere near that. Yeah. 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 That's very, that's very cool. And in, in metazoan cells, um, I, so does Tango 1 associate with other bulky cargo other than collagen cells? So, Kelly Ten Hagen has shown that Tango 1 is required for export of mucins. Okay, so we, we never tested that, but she published this uh, last year. And um, we have identified a protein that is just like Tango. It's called Tali, Tango like. Uh, and it is expressed in liver and intestine, small intestine. And we published that it is required for the export of chylomicron. So it's exactly the same mechanism, mm -hmm. but slightly different protein. So it has the same domains two cold coal domains, a proline-rich domain um, in the, on the cytoplasm, this funky transmembrane helices. And in the lumen, it has an SH3-like domain. The only thing it is missing in the lumen is a coil-coil domain 
that is contained in Tango, but not contained in Tali. Tali is Tango-like, that's uh, the, the, the acronym, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Next, we have Max Nachuri. Max, hello. Hi, Viva. Great talk. Oh. So nice Thank to see you. <laughs> yes. So I think you, you unfortunately already answered my question. I was going to ask you what it would take to reconstitute collagen export in yeast. And I was saying you could use PICIA. Uh, why PICIA? I think we, 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 we can do it in yeast. PICIA is no, no easier. Um, um, for many reasons, we are doing it in Saccharomyces cerevisiae because it's still easy to manipulate. But Max, the question is, how long will it take? I mean, you know, if I had, you know, I, if I had 15 more postdocs, I would be able to do it very fast. Um, you know, we work on four different topics, collagens, mucins, unconventional secretions, and, 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 and now we're getting into this synthetic biology bit. So we're going a bit slow and it's technically challenging. But we are building one component at a time. Yeah. So maybe in five, ten years, you'll have. <laughs> Don't you think that the distance between the ER and the Golgi and the, the complete lack of association in Cerevisia will make it true? Okay. So difficult? you ask a very important question, and I have an answer for you. Ah. Drosophila cells do not have ergic. And in that case, Tango is transferring material directly from ER to the first cistern of the Golgi. This is Kelly Ten Hagen's work. Now, when we express Tango in yeast, remember they have dispersed Golgi membranes. We find that the Golgi membranes are now tethered to where Tango is. Oh, wow. Yeah, precisely, wow. So we are looking for the tether. So the NB and, uh, and uh, NRZ tether complex has orthologs in yeast, okay? It's called DSL. And we are testing whether Tango in yeast recruits DSL and then recruits cis -Golgi. And then so you therefore have the capacity to recapitulate exactly what happens in, for example, in flies, which do not have an intermediate compartment. So, so we are you know, slowly getting there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a great, great question. Yeah. Super, good luck. Thank you. Well, I'm going to need all luck, yes. Next we have Adwait. Right. Oh my God! All of these people I know from the past. Hello, Hello Vic. Hello. How are you? Alive. Hey, John, as always. Um, I was just wondering if you have seen any evidence of these tunnels by EM. Uh, EM is not easy, but can I just tell you something strange happened? Um, John Heuser came across our work or talked to someone, and about a month ago called me that he wants to do EMs for us, and if he if I can get John excited. I think there is a possibility we might see it. I have no EM facility here. Uh, and EM is not probably, it's going to be difficult. We need something else. We need to do this in some sort of live cells. Okay, it's hmm. going to be very easy to see a tube coming out of the ER and connected to the Golgi or to the Urgic. That is probably not so difficult. But to show an opening is more difficult. It's, 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 it's going back to the same business of translocation channel in the ER, right? So yeah, we, are looking, we are looking for ways to do this. And for that, we need a tagged, trimeric, fully folded collagen. Mm. And we are trying, to, so I was talking to Bo earlier on to see if he could help us create a form because many people can express tagged uh, collagens, but most of them remain single chain. They don't assemble into its trimeric structure. Mm. And so what goes out is unclear. So we are trying to do that, but that's what it's going to take. Or some mechanism where we could see flux of material from the ER to the urgic compartment uh, without going to um, some sort of vesicle intermediate. But that's what a very what difficult. What if you synchronize? What if you synchronize? Uh, you know, synchronization, you know, all this business of rush, which is very popular. I know many people use it. But what you do is you create such a huge amount of material and when mm. you release it something bizarre happens and you, if you start accumulating collagen in the er you start activating upr and you, you do a lot of stuff so we are we could do that we haven't done it um, and i know people like frank fred and uh, alberto is using that trick and you yourself have used that trick um, mm -hmm. we have to resort to that but yeah we haven't we haven't quite gotten to that stage yet and this um, is a major challenge. 
Yeah. So your answer, actually, uh, if I if I may, uh, is a nice segue to the next question. So with Tango inhibitors, right, the ones that mm -hmm. you presented, accumulating collagens, as you said, in the ER might induce adverse effects like activating the UPR. So how safe are these inhibitors? Well, in the mouse, there is nothing wrong with the mouse. I see. So they seem to, well, you know, but of course, a mouse is a mouse is a mouse is a mouse. So what we are trying to do is in collaboration with a huge group in Cologne. So this is where I was given some sort of humbled research award. Um, they have access to patients with scleroderma and hundreds and hundreds of patients. So we're using their skin cells and testing them, testing our inhibitors directly. But we need a lot of clearance and we are in that stage of getting clearance. But that would be the next thing we would be doing because the mouse data is very good. We've also done it in organoids. That's fine too. But we need to go to the real skin. You know, a mouse skin is not the same as a human skin. But it seems to have no effect, uh, no, no damaging effect to, um, to the skin because many of the cells that are recruited to the skin are being recruited and they seem fine. Um, so, but we need to do that in a human system and we are, we, are, we are ready to do it, but we just need clearance. And because of this COVID, everything got stalled. So we could have had done this thing in May, but we will have to wait till September now. Yeah. Very exciting, Vivek, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Peng. Peng, could you unmute yourself? Hi. Uh, hi, Vivek. Thank you for the Hello. great talk. I just had a question about the ergic, because it's yeah. really interesting that you show that Tangle 1 actually recruits the ergic membrane, and that provides the material for forming these the large carrier. But then you say, the large carrier form then becomes the ergic. So it just- Well, it is, like it is the, the ergic. It is the ergic. So, you so know- That kind of sounds like a futile cycle then, like how does the ergic productively transport cargo in the interrograde direction if it's constantly being recruited back to the ER to, to accommodate collagen? I was curious well, about that. Well, no, I mean, you're, you're producing COP2 vesicles. You're, you're, uh, uh, ergic is a composite of it's a mix of COP2 and COP1 derived material, okay? And, and so we are basically saying that there is so much of ergic membrane and we don't know if it is all of ergic that is recruited. This is something that we need to do. When we do our experiment by, by putting a tear domain on mitochondria, we don't see at all the entire pool. We see a, a fraction of the material being recruited. And we don't know if there are subpopulations of ergic. We've only tested with ergic 53 antibody, and there is data that ergic 53 containing membranes are different from ergic 43 containing membranes. That's also an ergic compartment. So because ergic is a, is, 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 is a compilation of vesicles and tubules, what we need to discern is what exactly is being recruited. And you know, for that, we need more uh, reagents, more, more, more ways to do this thing. Um, so there will be lots of questions. I know this is a challenging hypothesis. We, we're, you know, we're basically saying that the incoming carrier from in the from the downstream compartment becomes the forward carrier. This is what we're saying. So it's, you know, yes, this is something that we need to resolve. But this is the data that we have. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if this is very satisfying. Um, you know, if there was a lot of time, I could explain to you. Uh, in many, many different ways, but um, uh, uh, others are saying the same thing now. So it's not just us. There are about four or five labs who, uh, in fact, there's a paper in Matrix Biology from Jennifer and Sergei Lakin's lab, which basically in the end concludes exactly the same. And, and, and there's a group in Israel in, at the Weizmann Institute, and there's a group in Pittsburgh, and many others who are basically showing that we need to fuse membranes in order to go forward. Um, uh, the, the details of the exact composition of the membrane, apart from the fact that they contain ergic 53, is unclear. And in Drosophila, there is no ergic 53, and in that case, it's directly the cis node. Thank you. Sure. All right, next we have Jay Zhang. Jay? Um. Maybe I can just ask the question she has uh, written. What's the difficulty to detect the collagen protein per se in the 300 nanometer vesicles? We need some sort of label form. And you know, it, we, the, the, 
300 nanometer vesicle. What is the difficulty in seeing? Well, we haven't seen any vesicles. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, next we have Dengue Ma. Dengue, can you uh, get online? Hey, Sherry, can you hear me? Yeah, good. Go for it. Hi, we're back. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a really inspiring work. And I just wonder if uh, there's any uh, collagen type specificity for uh, the tank one dependent mechanism which you talked about. Sorry, say it again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I missed yeah, I wonder if there's any uh, collagen type specificity for uh, Tangle one. So you oh, showed the collagen okay, type. Okay, so here is, something, here is something that I, I suppose you're referring this to your TM, TMEM131. So mm -hmm. collagen. So Tango binds to HSP47, which binds to many collagens, but not all collagens. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and so you have to assume that Tango 1, and of course, HSP47 will not work for mucins. It's a, it's, it's a different mechanism. So there is a very strong possibility that Tango 1 is responsible for many of the collagens. We know for many that have been tested, uh, which utilize the HSP47 system. But there might be, for example, your protein TM uh, EM131, which has exactly the similar transmembrane helices, similar domains, mm -hmm. similar organization. Okay. So it could be that that is functioning for some of the other collagens. Or there is also the possibility that Tango and TM131 work together. So we have, we have not tested that, uh, but at least for not all 28 collagens that have been tested for collagen type 1, 7, 4, 12 that we've done in our own lab, you need Tangle 1. We don't know about the others. Got it. Thank you. Great. Sure. Thanks. Next up, we have Bo Huang. Bo. Bo. Um, well, this is great, I mean, uh, great talk. Uh, I have uh, one question and we intrigued by the uh, transmembrane domain being a lipid diffusion barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, and is there any, like, in, in anything about, the, anything known about the molecular mechanism? Well, I mean, it, it's a physical barrier. You know, you, 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 put, you put a fence in the membrane, basically. Um, and which, which prevents lipid movement, uh, lipid and protein movement, in fact, both. Uh, 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 so we've only shown here uh, uh, the lipid. So it's, it's a physical barrier which prevents lipid mixing. So that really, uh, it really needs to be a, I mean, how dense is the fence to really- Oh, I have no idea. I'm, this is what I was discussing with you earlier. We would like to quantitate how many molecules of Tangle 1 are present in a ring. So Matthias Mann has calculated there are about 170,000 molecules of Tango 1 in a cell. And Ben Glick and a few others calculated how many ER exit sites there are. So there is something like 100 to 400 ER exit sites. So from that, we calculated um, you know, that Tango 1 at a ring can reach um, very, very, very high concentrations. I can't remember. We've written this somewhere but the exact numbers are not known, and we will need to know that. Um, so we are trying to, you know, we can purify Tango 1 in small amounts. We are trying to purify it in large amounts so that we can then re reconstitute them in either liposomes, uh, the same way as we've done with the transmembrane helices, or in other material, and then ask what kind of rings are assembled and, and what is the dimension. So we are working to use AFM and various other technologies to get to these kinds of issues, but we, we, are, we are nowhere near. These are okay. the obvious things that we would like to do, yeah. Yeah, because this really reminds me of um, potentially the ciliary transition zone being a lipid diffusion barrier at the base of the cilium as well. Mm -hmm. That's what Max and Jeremy will be very interested in. Sure, absolutely. And in fact, again, because of uh, lack of time, although I've used up a lot of time, Think of Tango One Ring as, you know, think of the lumen and, and, and the ring and the cytoplasmic part. I think of this as some sort of mechanics shock, okay? Where material is coming in, collagens, the unfolded collagens are discarded, which are then sent out for degradation. 
and the collagens that are fully folded are then now allowed to go forward in the direction of the urchic and then to the next stage. Okay. But think of this ring as similar to the nuclear pore ring. Okay. So you have material uh, coming in from the luminal side and it's coming into the cytoplasmic side. Okay. It's something similar. So you create that compartment which is used for gating material across the nuclear pore and be saying that it is very similar. The, the concept of a tangle one ring is very similar. And the luminal domain of tangle one is all unstructured. Okay. So it could very well function as a filtering device. Uh, and, and what you want to do is the only thing you want to do is to prevent the mixing of the ER membrane compartment components to the components of the urchic that is fused um, on the cytoplasmic phase. And the rest is fine. Yeah. Okay. But if, if anybody wants to collaborate with us, it'd be an honor. Thanks, Bo. Um, and, and then the final question, uh, Doug had to leave, but he had a question for you. So he, sa he writes, you mentioned that the rings in the drosophila cells were larger because they secrete huge amounts of collagen. Under high secretory load in mammalian cells, do you think the rings enlarge? Are there more rings? And are the uh, connections to yeah. both persistent? We haven't done that. We, this is simply based on, an, an, you know, it's just the size, because the, the, the amount of mucins secreted, salivary glands secrete only mucins, and fat bodies secrete predominantly collagens. It's collagen type four, okay. Um, so we, and because the rings are almost, in that case, half a micrometer is huge, okay. It's huge. We are in the range of 200 to 250 nanometers. Okay. diameter. So whether this is linked to the quantities being secreted, we don't know at this stage because we cannot overexpress collagens in these cells. Then it becomes very complicated. But uh, there's a paper of ours in bioarchives. It's in review right now. Uh, the reviewers are taking their time to uh, give us uh, the feedback. In that, we looked at the physical model, a physical mechanism of how tango ring functions. So if you're interested, you could have a look at that and then we can discuss afterwards because it's, we don't think the ring, it's a filament, but it, we don't think it does that much of this. You know, there might be room for small incremental increases, but not to go from 200 nanometers to 400 nanometer diameter. That I don't think can happen when it is a filament in the plane of the ER membrane. Thank so, you know. Thanks so much, Vivek. That was an outstanding talk and we really enjoyed it. Too. And it's a reflection of so many questions that everyone was uh, highly engaged. So thank you again. Uh, I'm honored. Hope to see I'm you. Honored. Stay safe. Thank Bye. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.